horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Bye. Randy Tyler stood with a disdainful smile as he faced Captain Prescott of the Texas Rangers at headquarters. Other members of the force were lined up in silent formation and watched with interest as their captain stood before Randy Tyler and spoke in a voice that carried both disappointment and anger. Tyler? When you became a member of the Rangers, we had every reason to believe that you'd be a credit to the force. As a recruit, you were one of our best men. For the past two years, your conduct has been above reproach. Thank you, sir. Thanks, you're not in order, Tyler. Night before last, you picked a fight with a fellow Ranger in a public cafe. When one of your superiors was called in to stop the disturbance... You turned upon him, knocking him to the floor. You're guilty of insubordination and conduct and becoming a member of the Rangers. Your refusal to speak in defense of your conduct is an added factor to your disgrace. I'm not sorry for what I did, Captain Prescott. So much the worse. It's my duty to inform you now, Tyler, that you are hereby dishonorably dismissed from the Rangers. Notification of your dismissal will be sent to every newspaper in the state. And all members of the Rangers will be forbidden to recognize or associate with you. That's all I have to say to you, Mr. Tyler. That afternoon, after leaving headquarters in disgrace, Randy rode to a small house on the edge of town where the captain's niece, Mary Prescott, lived with her widowed mother. Oh, this month, oh, the door oh, opened oh, and Mary oh, came out. Hi, honey. Looks like you're expecting me. Yes, I was, Randy. I, I heard the news and I didn't want you to come into the house. Mother wouldn't be very nice to you, I'm afraid. I reckon I have to expect that. But, well, you still believe in me, don't you, Mary? Oh, Randy, I'd like to, but... There must be some reason why you do such a thing. It's so unlike you. And you seem so proud of being a ranger. 
Randy, tell me why did you act the way you did? Honey, I can't tell you why. Maybe someday you'll understand. No, Randy, I have to know now. That is, if you did have a good reason. I'm sorry, honey. If you don't have enough faith in me to believe... Randy, my father was an officer in the Texas Rangers, and my uncle still is. I... I can't consider myself engaged to... to a man who isn't fit to be one. Here. Here's your ring. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mary. Well, all right. But listen, Mary, I've got to tell you... Goodbye, Randy. I don't want to see you ever again. Mary, wait, please. Uh, Easy, boy. Get up there. Come on, get up. Randy Tyler left Austin, where the Texas Rangers headquarters was located, and headed southwest until he finally arrived in San Antonio. A few hours after his arrival... Rufus Fillmore, owner of a stage and freight line, looked up from his desk as a man known as Gap Towson entered his office. Well, Gap, what's on your mind? Remember reading in the paper a day or so ago about an hombre who was kicked out of the Texas Ranger? Yeah. Fellow named Tyler, wasn't it? Randy Tyler? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, he's here in town, over at the cafe right now. Well, what if he is? I was thinking, uh... He must be mighty sore at the Rangers for what they did to him, Rufus. Mm, yes, I suppose he is. And he won't find it easy to get a job, either. Uh, that's what are you leading up to, Gat? As a former Ranger, he ought to be a big help to us, Rufus. Say, might at that. You think he'd be willing to join the gang? I could sort of hint around and find out. On one condition. He's not to know I'm really the head man, do you understand? Not right now, anyway. Maybe after he's proved himself, I'll let him know. He'll be safe enough after he pulls a job or two with us. I'll go and over and have a talk with Tyler right now. The night before, the Lone Ranger and Toto had made camp in the hills not far from San Antonio. The next day, the day that Tyler arrived in town... They spent considerable time fixing worn riding gear and shining metal and leather. As they worked, the Lone Ranger talked. They came down here, Toto, because of a gang operating in this territory. Uh Most of the jobs they've pulled have been within 20 miles of San Antonio. That's right. Because of that, I have the idea they might be getting their orders from someone right in town. Hmm, Maybe you've got right idea, Kimosabe. Toto, when we stopped at the mission a week ago, the Padre gave me a lot of information. Um, me see, Padre show you plenty newspaper. That's right. I was very interested in the back copies of the San Antonio paper. Each weekly issue for the past two months carried a story of a holdup or robbery near the town. Mm, that's not good. There have been several holdups of stagecoaches and freight wagons. I noticed that the stages and freight wagons of a company having headquarters in San Antonio were not molested. Oh, that'd give you ID, maybe, huh? Seems strange to me that the Fillmore stage and freight lines seem to be immune from attack. Ah. I noticed the Fillmore company advertisement in the paper was headed, Travel and Ship the Safeway is the Fillmore lines. Strange they could be so sure of themselves. Mm, That's right. I've been thinking over a plan, Toto, that might prove a point and at the same time bring the outlaw gang into action. Ah. What plan do you think of? I'm going to fix a very careful disguise, Toto. I want to look like a well-to-do Mexican gentleman. The padre got me an outfit of suitable clothing while I was there. I have it in my saddlebags. Uh, Me remember. And then what you do? I'm going to town and talk to someone at the Fillmore Company about a valuable shipment. And then wait for developments. Late that afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode to the edge of town... They pulled to a stop in a secluded grove. Oh, 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 oh. Easy, John, easy, fella. <laughs> uh, you've got plenty good disguise, Kimosabe. You look like fine Mexican hombre. You do good job with Berry Dye. Well, if I could fool you, Toto, I ought to get by with the others. <laughs> Them be fooled plenty. You wait here. I'll go on foot to the freight line office. I don't expect to be very long. Uh-huh. Me wait. <laughs> A 
short time later, Rufus Fillmore looked up as what seemed to be a Mexican gentleman entered his office. Good afternoon, <laughs> sir. Come right in. Gracias, senor. I've come about the shipment. Fine, fine. Sit down, Mr. Uh... Senor Don Rangero. Oh, of course, I'm sure I've heard the name before. Well, sir, what can I do for you? Uh, you are the manager, perhaps, of the freight line, senor. <laughs> manager and owner. I... I'm Rufus Fillmore. Oh, that is good. The shipment I wish to discuss is of great value to me. I would not care to discuss it with anyone who is not discreet, senor. Oh, now, don't you worry. I keep everything confidential. When? Uh, well, first, senor, tell me. Have you a wagon going to Corpus Christi soon, huh? Yes, if you haven't too much to ship, I have a small train of three freight wagons coming through from Austin day after tomorrow. On the way to the port of Corpus Christi. What would be the charge, senor, for two packing cases, each 50 pounds in weight? I must get them to the port to meet a sheep. Well, the cost of carrying two such cases would be about, uh, $100. Oh, that is mucho dinero, senor, for just two small cases, no? But you want them to get there safely, don't you? But, of course, the safe delivery must be assured. Ah. Those cases must contain something of great value, Mr. Don Rangero. Si, senor, that is true. Oh, but $100... I should give the matter some thought, senor. Perhaps the express company will not charge so much. Maybe so, but they'll charge you according to the value as well as the weight. But if I do not mention the value, it will not be near so much. A gentleman of means like yourself shouldn't quibble about the cost if the shipment is really valuable. Once I get those cases to my arm, senor, then I shall not have to worry about the expense. But the trip from Mexico City has taken much of my dinero. Adios, senor. I shall inquire at the express office. If the rates are not much better, I shall come back, no? As the Lone Ranger, disguised as a Mexican gentleman, left his office, Rufus Fillmore sat for a moment. Then he rose and went to the back room. What's up, Rufus? Listen, Gat. Well-dressed Mexican was just in the office about shipping two 50-pound cases. Wants them sent to Corpus Christi. Hold the deal, Phil. All right. Yeah, look, Rufus... Why are you telling us about the two cases? Oh, from the way he acted, I, I know they're very valuable. I'd say he's shipping gold to go on a boat at Corpus Christi, which will try to take it into Mexico. Then you want those cases to be missing when they get to the port with the wagons, eh? Fool isn't using our freight line. He's gone to make arrangements at the express office. They have an express stage going to Corpus Christi tomorrow afternoon. Are we going to hold up the express stage and get those cases, boss? Yes, yes, I'll work out the details with Gat. Oh, uh, where's that fellow Tyler you got to join the gang earlier today? I took him out of the ranch to stay with the others. He's out there in the bunkhouse getting acquainted. Good, good. That small spread I had you buy in your name is a fine cover-up for our operations. Gives the men a place to stay without causing suspicion. That's right, Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody suspects a gang they've been hunting is living right out there at the Bar G Ranch. <laughs> I sure hope we can trust that new Omri Tyler. I keep remembering he used to be a ranger. Sure, but don't forget, Phil. He got kicked out of the rangers, and he plenty sore at him. Better keep an eye on him until he really proves himself, Gant. Don't worry. I warned Muggs to watch him close. Good. We'll have a chance to let him prove himself and to get those cases at the same time. Beat it, Phil. Yep. I have things to talk over with Gant. The Lone Ranger and Tottle returned to their camp and discussed the meeting with Fillmore after the Lone Ranger had removed the Mexican disguise. The masked man was saying... I left Fillmore with the impression I was going to ship a couple of valuable cases to San Antonio by express because of the cheaper rates. I noticed he didn't try very hard to change my mind. Well, you... You think maybe him have gang hold up express stage? That's what I'm hoping, Toto. The express stage leaves tomorrow afternoon. I thought out of a plan of action so the Fillmore is connected with the outlaw gang and sends them to waylay the express stage. The gang will be caught and their leader exposed. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. After talking to Fillmore, the Lone Ranger in the Mexican disguise returned to camp where he changed back to his own clothing and mask. He told Toto he had thought out a plan to capture the outlaw gang and the leader. That night, Gat Towson went to the Bar G Ranch and entered the bunkhouse. Hi, Gat. Phil said you'd be coming out. Yeah, I told the boys you were talking over something with the boss. We got a job to do tomorrow. Where's Tyler, Muggs? Back there in the bunk. Guess he's sleeping. No, I'm not asleep. Say you're planning a job for tomorrow, Gat? That's right. We're going to hold up the express stage after he leaves town. We found out he'll be carrying something worth taking. Well, it's about time we pulled another job. Yeah, been two weeks since the last one. All right, quiet down. I'll tell you what the plans are. Phil, you're to take the men out the south trail to Sage Pass. Yeah. Keep yourselves hidden until the stage is partway through the pass and then pull the holdup. What about you, Gat? Aren't you coming with the gang? Yeah. I'm taking Tyler. The two of us will lie and wait a couple of miles from town till the stage passes along the trail. That's just a precaution to make sure they haven't got wind or anything, and that no one's following along behind. That's a good idea. Tyler and I will get to the pass in time to join the gang in the holdup. It'll be up to you, Tyler, to cover the driver and the guard. And if you don't act right, well, it'll be too bad for you. I'll do my part. Don't worry. What about the boss? Doesn't he join the gang on jobs? Nope, he plans the jobs, that's all. Will I get to meet him before we go to hold up the stage? Nope, no reason why you should. You'll get to meet him soon enough, Tyler. But remember this. If you don't prove yourself tomorrow, you won't live to meet him or anybody else. The next day, after Silver and Scout were saddled, the Lone Ranger gave instructions to Toto, saying... Toto, ride to the edge of town and wait until the stage leaves. Then ride to the sheriff's office. Tell the sheriff there's a masked man following the stage, and you think the stage might be held up. Ah. And what you do, Kimasari? I'll be about a mile from town waiting. When the stage passes, I'll follow it. I'm sure the sheriff will start out with a posse. But you can come ahead and join me. Ah, that good idea. And maybe sheriff and posse get there in time to help catch outlaw gang. That's what I'm hoping. Well, I'll ride a short distance down the trail with you now. All right, let's go. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. One silver. One silver. That afternoon, Toto waited on the edge of town until he saw the express stage go off the south trail. Then he rode into San Antonio to the sheriff's office. A short time later, the Lone Ranger watched from a grove of trees a mile from town as the stagecoach passed along the trail. There goes, Silver. Now we'll follow. Come on, Silver. Farther along the trail, behind some big boulders, Gat waited with Randy Tyler. Gat eyed the young ex-ranger closely as he spoke. That stage ought to be coming soon, Tyler. Remember, the whole gang will be watching to see how you act. Yeah, I know. If you make good with us, you won't be sorry. Hey, look, there's a big cloud of dust down the trail. Must mm -hmm. be the stage coming now. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, all right. We'll wait a few minutes after the stage goes by. Then, if everything seems all right, we'll be on our way to join in the holdup. I see you never leave anything to chance, Gat. That's right, we don't. How do you always cover your trail so as no one can ever follow the game? <laughs> we'll ride till we hit the creek and go along in the water till we reach a range where we have a lot of cattle grazing. We drive the cattle back and forth over the trail, then head for the ranch. And there goes the stage. Now we'll watch the trail a few minutes in case the stage is being followed. The Lone Ranger rode along behind the stage at a safe distance. He was passing along near the boulders where Gat and Randy waited several minutes after the stage had gone by. Suddenly, a shot rang out and a bullet passed close. Stop where you are and reach! Oh, oh, easy, steady. Move his head in cover, mister. We're coming out. And one move, I made a bullet. The Lone Ranger sat in the saddle with his hands raised as Gat and Randy looked him over. Gat spoke. Mast, huh? What's the idea? Figuring on pulling a one-man job or holding up to stage? Maybe. We could have plugged you from behind the boulders. But I'm curious to know what you're up to first. We have much time to waste, so you better talk fast. There's nothing to talk about. I thought for a minute he was one of the gang, Gat. Well, he isn't. 
What's more, since I've had a close look, I'm convinced he's not an owl hoot either. What do you mean? I've been around plenty, Tyler. I heard of this hombre before. That mask, the white sty, and the fancy guns. Why, you, you mean he's... The Lone a... Ranger. He helps the law. I read about you in a newspaper, Tyler. Oh. He knows you used to be a Texas Ranger. I got an idea. You can prove yourself right now, Tyler, by putting a bullet in Now, it. hold on, Ken. If you don't, I will. But it's a good way to show you really want to join our gang. Now, go ahead. We got to hurry. Well, all right, I'll do it. You keep him covered while I go a little closer. I don't want to miss. <laughs> By golly, for a minute I thought you wouldn't. The Lone Ranger watched as Randy moved his horse from beside Gat, swinging it off to the side a bit. The masked man realized that he was in a bad situation, especially since Randy had moved to one side oh, and Gat was still in front of him. Even with a quick and sudden draw, he couldn't shoot at each of them before one of them could put a bullet in him. But the sudden move came from Randy Easy, Tyler. Boy, this will settle things. Oh, he shot me. Look, mister, we got to move fast. Easy, Easy boy. Be that was unexpected, Tyler. Yeah, you'll be sorry for this. You wounded his gun arm. Tyler, if you joined his gang, I don't understand why we'll you... We'll talk while we ride, mister. Right now, let's do something about Gat and then go after the stage. The gang's waiting on a basin up ahead to hold it up. Yes, I know that basin. There's a narrow pass at either end into a wide valley. There's canyon-like cliffs along each side of it. Yeah, yeah, that's the place. All right, we'll fix Gat's wound. It isn't serious. And we'll tie him on his horse and take him along. The trail is too full of ruts for the stage to travel very fast. But we can easily catch up with it. Just as the Lone Ranger and Randy were about to leave with Gat... Toto, who had been riding hard ahead of the posse, caught up to them, and they all rode up the trail toward the basin. The gang was waiting for the stage. About time for the stage to be coming through the basin, Muggs. Yeah. Gat will be right behind it with Tyler. I hope Gat knew what he was doing when he let that hombre join us. We'll soon know if he's on the level. If he isn't, it'll be too bad for Tyler. Look, here comes the stage through the pass into the yeah. basin. Hit ladder, boys, and be ready to oh, ride. All right, let's get going. Come get up, get up. Up. Because the stage had been held back by the badly rutted trail, the Lone Ranger and Toto with Randy Tyler and the prisoner Gat had no difficulty in reaching the pass into the basin just behind the stagecoach. Oh, As they entered the basin, they saw the gang ride out to intercept the stage a short distance ahead. There's the gang stopping the stage now. Use your guns and follow me. Right. The outlaw gang stopped beside the stage, turned to give battle to the approaching men. Instead of riding directly toward the outlaw gang, the Lone Ranger suddenly turned the galloping silver off to the side. Follow me! One, two, three! Come on, Tonto and the other two swung in behind the racing white stallion, and the watching outlaws were confused into thinking the masked man and his followers were going to pass them off to one side and head out of the basin. But when the Lone Ranger and the men with him reached a point on the trail beyond the stage and the outlaw gang, they stopped suddenly and turned. Oh, 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 oh. I will head straight for them from this direction. Look, there's a posse entering the basin where we came in. I expected that. We'll have the gang trapped. They can't get out of the basin. All right, let's go. One, two, get away. Get out. For several minutes, the gang caught between the gunfire of the posse and the Balloon Rangers group put up a fight, but they were quickly subdued. The Lone Ranger and Tonto with Randy and Gat came to a stop where the gang huddled in a dejected group in front of the sheriff and the posse. Oh, 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 oh. We don't savvy this. Seem to be on our side, but with that mask and all... Hey, sure. There's the Indian that came to tell us about the holdup. Yes, that's right. I told him to go to you, Sheriff. This man next to me with his hands tied is one of that gang. And this other one is too. Ask the others. That's right. Tyler joined our gang. What happened, Cat? Tyler's a double-crossing polecat, that's what. Tyler? Randy Tyler who got kicked out of the Texas Rangers? Now, now, wait a minute, Sheriff. I carry something in the top of my boot I want to show you. Just take a look at this. A short letter wrapped around a badge, yes. My Texas Ranger badge. That letter explains. Well, let's see. To whom it may concern, Ranger Randy Tyler became the subject of expulsion proceedings according to a plan... Known only to me and to my immediate junior officer, Lieutenant Gibbons. 
Kyle was willing to do this in the line of duty in order to find the gang operating in the vicinity of San Antonio. This letter is his authority to act as a Texas Ranger in good standing. Signed, H.M. Prescott, Captain, Texas Ranger. As a Texas Ranger, Sheriff, I can vouch for my friend, the mass man, and for the Indian. Well, that's good enough for us, I reckon. Well, now that you got the game... We I have suppose... all but the real leader. I'm sure I know who he is, Sheriff. Tyler told me the Bar G Ranch was the headquarters of the gang. Then that makes Gat Towson the gang leader. He'll hang along with the rest. Gat, a certain man in town, won't make a move to help you because he won't want to expose his identity. Are you going to let him get away with it while you and the others take the blame? No, by thunder. Rufus Fillmore will have to stay in trial of the rest of us. Rufus Fillmore? That's right. Great day. Gat and these others will give you plenty of proof against him, Sheriff. We'll pick him up when we get back to town, Sheriff. After that, I'm heading back to Austin to make things right with a certain young lady I left back there. She'll be proud of you, Randy. And so will the entire force of Texas Rangers. You and the sheriff can handle things now, so Tonto and I will be on our way. All right, let's go, Tonto. Adios. 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 Thanks for what you've done. By thunder, you Texas Rangers sure don't stop at anything to get the ones you're after. The man who just rode away with the Indian is the one who really cracked this case wide open. It's sure strange to hear you giving credit to a masked hombre. Sheriff, he deserves all the credit we can give him for what he's done for the West. He's the Lone Ranger. is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.